Hi Vox. today we're going to discuss what we can expect from Raspberry Pi 6. I've been using all Raspberry Pi variants, like Raspberry Pi 5, Raspberry Pi 5 with 16GB of RAM, Raspberry Pi 500, Raspberry Pi 500 Plus and Compute Medium 5. Each has got its specifics, but basically these are the same computer. They are all based on Raspberry Pi 5 architecture. Though Raspberry Pi competition is focused on improving hardware as much as possible, Raspberry Pi is also focusing on software. This is just just like Ibn Absen said last year on a Hacker Day chat when he mentioned that there was a large margin for major software improvements that would have brought major speedups to the existing Raspberry Pi architecture. Not surprisingly, Raspberry Pi 5 architecture is still competitive, even compared to a classic PC. If you still think that the classic PC is far superior from Raspberry Pi 5, then watch my videos and you'll see that you can actually install the latest versions of Windows and the latest versions of Microsoft Office to Raspberry Pi and it works very well, even better than some old mini PCs. Raspberry Pi 500 Plus is an all-in-one computer which emphasizes on the strong points of adding an SSD drive and 16GB of RAM to the core Raspberry Pi 5 architecture. These are crucial for running sophisticated operating systems like Windows 11 efficiently. Though all operating systems on Raspberry Pi 5 architecture can run from an SD card, it is much more convenient to run them from an SSD drive, which is about 5 to 10 times faster. The next thing that Raspberry Pi 6 should address is an option of uh, better graphics. An option of being able to attach a sophisticated graphics card like on a classic PC. We do have such an option now with Raspberry Pi 5, but the device drivers for RM64 architecture for many graphics cards as well as their adaptations for Raspberry Pi 5 architecture are still experimental versions which will have to be thoroughly tested and refined before reliable versions for daily use could be produced. There is no immediate way to attach a sophisticated graphics card to Raspberry Pi 6, all the burden would still remain on the inbuilt graphics core, which will have to occupy a very large portion of the system on chip to make it possible for much higher graphics accelerations than Video Core 7, which is inbuilt into Raspberry Pi 5's PCM2712 system on chip. The next very important chapter in Raspberry Pi's development is AI acceleration capability, which will enable ordinary users, which are not keen to invest in AI hats and other hardware to support real-time AI applications, like object recognition from live video. Though Halo modules on Raspberry Pi 5 heads offer a high acceleration, they are still too expensive for many Raspberry Pi users. Many single board computer makers have already realized how important it is to have an out-of-the-box onboard AI acceleration. However, and fortunately for Raspberry Pi 5, in many cases, software support is still insufficient. To put it simple, many competitive single board computers do have an inbuilt AI capability, but it is very, very hard to use. Therefore, a very small portion of users is actually making any use of it. As I've started with Raspberry Pi 3 and then Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 5, I've realized that Raspberry Pi has a different policy. New features on a new model are always designed to support the needs of the majority of users, so they are going to be used by most of them most of the time. I'm sure that Raspberry Pi is going to retain this policy with its sixth model, because there is an increasing number of AI applications which rely on object recognition, voice recognition and voice generation. AI is also used in large language models to help us with decision making. AI may also be used in home robots. And now let's get to the most important question that many of us are intrigued with. Why Raspberry Pi is not rushing with Raspberry Pi 6 while there is so much competition? I think that there are a number of reasons for this. When Raspberry Pi 5 was released, the software was not ready yet. We actually had to wait for the new releases of all major operating systems, except for Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm, which was the newest Raspberry Pi OS edition at the time, and the only that supported Raspberry Pi 5. Compared to the previous models, Raspberry Pi 5 is different, because as Raspberry Pi 3 was introduced, all the software from Raspberry Pi 2 actually worked out of the box, and the same was with Raspberry Pi 4. But Raspberry Pi 5 introduced 
RP1 microcontroller, which required new versions of all operating systems. I expect Raspberry Pi 6 to have a better initial software support, which may be one of the very important reasons why they are not rushing with it. Orange Pi 6 Plus, which has recently been introduced, features Tiano Core BIOS, which is also used with Raspberry Pi when you're running BVM virtualization. This enables it to run Windows out of the box, as well as a number of Linuxes for ARM64 architecture, as well as all versions of Android. I expect Raspberry Pi 6 to have the same functionality and to actually become fully compatible with any ARM64 architecture PC, while adding 40-pin expansion port plus additional features that are usually found on Raspberry Pi and other compatible single board computers. Raspberry Pi 6 will also have to have a larger memory, starting from 8GB or 16GB up to 64 or 128GB, depending on what kind of memory chips will be available at the time. I doubt that Raspberry Pi would limit itself to, let's say, 32 gigabytes with the address bus. I guess that they have learned a lesson with Raspberry Pi 5 because the largest RAM on Raspberry Pi with the old system on chip designated C0 or C1 was only 8 gigabytes. Only the newest T0 version system on chip enables 16 gigabytes of RAM, which has become a standard for the most capable Raspberry Pi models. And now for the final question, let's talk about software. Is it all right for Raspberry Pi to support other operating systems than Raspberry Pi OS. Some Raspberry Pi enthusiasts think that it is not fair for Raspberry Pi to support Windows 11. But I think on the contrary, if I buy a computer, I would be glad that I have an option of using any kind of operating system because I'm sure that Raspberry Pi 6, at least at the beginning, is not going to be very cheap. If I decide to buy a Raspberry Pi instead of a classic PC, I'll also expect it to be able to run Windows because if I need Windows by some coincidence then I'll just change the SD card or the SSD drive and then I'm gonna run Windows why not if I'm not able to do it or if I'm not able to do it efficiently then I'll have to buy another computer which will cost me more than just a Windows license if you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe buttons and don't forget about the notification bell. If you really, really like it, then hype it as well. See you in the next video. Bye.